What's up guys, MKBHD here. And this is the Red Hydrogen One. And it, this, this is a really weird phone in a lot of ways. There have been so many questions about this thing. Is it really a $1,295 device? I knew red cameras were expensive, but why is the phone so expensive? What's so good about it? Is it like a red camera in your pocket? Who is it for? What makes it special? What is a holographic media machine? Why does this exist? You got questions? I got answers. And I've actually been in the unique position of not only using the phone for the past couple months, but actually seeing and following along with the development of it behind the scenes for almost as long. You guys might remember the video I did on the early prototype of the hydrogen back when it was still somewhat of an idea. I was into it, I shared it. Red wanted to share with you what they were working on with the world. Um, but since then, a lot has changed. And it's all landed on this, the final retail shipping version of the Red Hydrogen One. And as it exists, it is the most frustrating phone that I've bought this year. So as a smartphone, this thing is pretty scattered. It definitely doesn't resemble any other phone in pretty much any way on the outside. Like it clearly doesn't fit in with the 2018 glass sandwich design and notches. And I actually think it's perfectly fine being different. I would describe this as more of a modern industrial look. It's a huge phone, first of all. It has only a 5.7 inch display, which we'll talk a lot more about in a bit. But it's not the biggest screen out there, but it has the huge bezels around it. There's a giant forehead and a chin with big speakers in them, and we'll also talk a lot about those. And a pretty serious looking array of front facing cameras and sensors and an LED notification light. And then the back is this two-tone look with exposed carbon fiber and aluminum and just open seams and ridges and textures. And there's also a lot of text all around this phone, so it looks and feels industrial. And then you have this whole rubberized side grip, which with my hands is fine the way I hold the phone. But yeah, it's basically the opposite of an iPhone as far as build and slipperiness goes. Matter of fact, here's my little anti-plug. Don't put a D-brand skin on it. Don't put a case on it. It feels like it already has a case on it. It's built like an absolute tank. And it turns out that's a big reason why this phone costs $1,300, these materials, the carbon fiber and metal. But beyond that, there's pretty much no other reason why someone would spend that much on this phone. Let's get into all the other things. It's a big phone, like I said, and it makes a pretty good use of that space, keeping a headphone jack up at the top, the micro SD card slot, USB-C at the bottom, and it's packing a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, so the biggest in any phone I've tested so far. No IP rating yet though, but they say they're working on it, probably because of those exposed pins on the back. I'll tweet or share an update if they do get approved for IP68 or 67 or something like that. But then on the inside, since this phone's been in development for a year now, it's using specs from a year ago. So Snapdragon 835, six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage and expandable and that huge battery. So yes, you did hear that right. I said Snapdragon 835, not Snapdragon 845. And to be honest, if you just handed me a phone and asked me if I could tell if it was the 835 or 845, I probably wouldn't. But when you're spending $1,295 minimum for this phone, you kind of expect the latest and greatest highest end hardware, and that's not what you're getting here. But to be real, the performance is actually fine, as it should be, because there's pretty much no skin or any sort of heavy customization happening here. I've always said staying near stock Android is great for both performance and hopefully quick updates. So I can confirm on performance, but there's no word on Android P for this phone. But I've gotten maybe seven or eight software updates since I started testing. Pretty much all of them have been camera related though. But yeah, basically the only customization you'll find in the Hydrogen software is this red launcher, which is actually pretty good. It feels like Nova launcher and has a lot of options. Uh, and then some ugly custom icons and some pre-installed apps for holographic content. But yeah, that's why the performance and battery life are actually good. The software is simple enough and you've got six gigs of RAM. Okay, so this is the part where we should address the frustrating part of this phone. What is a holographic media machine. Why is that the tagline for this phone? Well, that's because of three things. The display, the speakers, and the cameras on this phone. They're all specialized for something called four view. So let's start with the display. Uh, it's a 5.7 inch panel, like I said, LCD, 2560 by 1440, so pretty high pixel density. And through normal use in 2D mode, normal mode, it seems pretty good. Colors and contrasts are on point at first glance. Viewing angles are good. 
but I'll get back to that in a second. What's unique is this special mode, a glassesless 3D that works in portrait or landscape with specially formatted content, for view content, holographic content. So don't let the word holographic fool you. That's just like one of their marketing terms. It's not like there's stuff like floating out over the display like a hologram. No, 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 no. It's, it's still a very much what you'd expect out of a glassesless 3D experience. It's all on the display. Uh, but it's more about depth. And it's sometimes pretty good. Now, obviously cameras don't show it pretty much at all. So sadly, I can't give you this experience. This is kind of the best I can do. But my best attempt at describing what you should be seeing is it's like this sort of shimmery, trippy 3D depth effect that you can see when you look at it head on. Uh, I actually think when it's used well and content is shot for four view, it's actually pretty good. I've showed this to a couple people and their reactions have been more or less impressed. When there's content specifically, like I said, made for this format, things will sort of pop out of the screen and appear to fly at you like a 3D movie. It's a, it's a good 3D effect, it's fun. Some content doesn't look good though, especially when it's more flat or there's less separation between a foreground and a background, or if it's just poorly converted, it just looks like a sort of a lame pixelated version of normal footage. So it's hit or miss in this way. But like any 3D effect, also you don't really want to look at it for too long. Eye fatigue is real. Hologrammy. Holo holographic is the word they use, but it's it's hard to explain, and it's kind of trippy. Whoa, dude, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's different like so there's a movie trailer version of it where there's like things coming towards you, and I think that's maybe the best use of it I've seen. Uh, it's impossible to show on camera. I've tried many different times, many no, different this, ways. No, this will never show up on camera. This yeah. is, but this is odd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this so is it, really strange. Okay, so it has this cool mode, but now as a result, you also have some other downsides of the display. A couple actually. The fact that it works in portrait or landscape is pretty cool. Most 3D effects only work with the display in one orientation. But because of the hardware layer that makes this possible, the brightness specifically suffers quite a bit. So the Hydrogen 1 screen just does not get very bright. And then in 2D or regular mode, you'll notice it looks, I would describe it as kind of pixelated, and I don't even have to pixel peep very hard to notice it, especially on white backgrounds. That again is because of that hardware layer, this display tech. So the 513 pixels per inch kind of doesn't mean that much if I'm constantly seeing what looks like these dots on the screen all the time. Look at this side by side with the Pixel 3 display. That's a big difference. Now the interesting news here is I asked Jim from Red about this and he says that it's a combination of part hardware, part software, and that it can technically be improved with software updates and that it used to be worse and that it's gotten better to the point that it exists now. I, I, I wanna believe, I wanna believe that it can keep getting better to the point where it's almost totally gone, but I don't know. But what I'm gonna do is actually, I'll post the entire little mini interview I did with Jim, founder of Red, uh, and you can hear exactly what he has to say for it, uh, his very PR answers or whatever, but I'll link it right below the like button if you're interested in hearing that. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, I, I can trust my eye about what I observe, and then you can listen to what he says. So that's the display, and then you have these speakers flanking it. They are also optimized for four view. Now, in a big phone like this, like maybe a Razer phone or a Pixel 3, I'm bracing myself for amazing speakers, right? Like they, they have these, these huge spaces for big drivers. They're not gonna be easy to block. I'm ready to be really happy with these speakers. Pull up some audio, anything, music, games, video, whatever. And the speaker on the Hydrogen One isn't even louder than average. This speaker doesn't sound that great. I put the volume all the way up to max, and to be fair, it doesn't distort much, so that's an upside, but it's also really lacking and a little bit tinny. Kinda sounds like a, a big, weak laptop speaker in the first place. It's a pretty big letdown to me. There is one setting you can tweak, though, and it's called 3D audio, and when you toggle it on, it gets even worse. Now the 3D effect it creates is actually noticeable. So then you start to hear the left and right stereo separation, the sort of pseudo surround sound effect that you'd be similar to hearing on an iPhone, but it's not that good. And it's even more tinny now and still not very loud. And then on the back, there are those cameras. This was one of the original reasons I was so excited when I heard Red 
was making a smartphone. Like the space was getting interesting. We had the Pixel 2 that was kind of the king of cameras for a while. Then iPhone XS stepped their game up and then Pixel 3 sort of expanded their lead. And we have all these other cameras with these multiple lenses and multiple cameras on the front and the back. And then we heard Red, a specialty camera maker that I obviously love, was gonna step in and make a smartphone which would have cameras on it. This should be amazing, I'm ready for this. And well, it turns out these cameras are just they're okay. They're just okay. It is dual 12 megapixel cameras in the hump of the back, dual LED flash, and the cameras are spaced out far enough apart for depth detection. And I've been sharing actually photos from Hydrogen's camera here and there for the better part of a couple months now, among multiple software updates and a rapidly evolving color science and camera app. But here's the thing to understand. Red doesn't make this camera. This is a, like an off the shelf camera, probably a Sony IMX sensor or something like that. The same kind you see in a bunch of other smartphones. So the best that RED can do is what they can get out of this sensor and then their improvements in color science and HDR and software. But RED's cameras, like the one I'm using for this video, are so incredible because RED is so good at making the silicon, the actual sensor that's used to shoot and then they control the entire image processing pipeline and they make the camera and the software and everything. So they control the entire end to end. But here with the hydrogen, like I said, they don't make these sensors. They're just doing the best they can with off the shelf parts and software. So if you were expecting some sort of extreme red quality camera built into this smartphone, that's not what you're getting here. Hold that thought until the end. So yeah, photos from the Hydrogen's built-in camera are all right. They're, they're solid with color and dynamic range. I left HDR turned on the whole time. Often reds became a little bit muddy. Sharpness was pretty much always good, but photos in general were just hit or miss. Basically you have to give it a lot of light and it'll do fine, but things start to fall apart in less than ideal conditions. This isn't drastically better or worse than something I'd expect out of like a OnePlus 6T. And obviously software updates will continue to make tweaks and adjustments over time, but that's just where we're at now. Of course, RED is mostly known for their video cameras, so how good is the 4K video here? Again, with the built-in stuff, pretty good, but nothing exceptional or unbelievable. Again, think OnePlus 6 level, or even LG V40 level on a good day. Nothing to write home about at this point. So the camera can also, as you imagine, capture more four view content, both on the back with the dual cameras, or even a four view selfie with the front facing array. So really, RED cares a lot about this four view, maybe to a fault. There is a whole solid inventory of content shot for four view, some trailers and some cinematic footage and stuff like that. It's great for demos and that's what I've been showing people. And there's also an entire app store filled with apps and games that support the holographic display mode. But if I'm looking at this right, it looks like there's only about 20 apps in the whole store. And uh, while that probably is necessary for delivering for view content with the special mode to hydrogen buyers, I guess you can't do through the Play Store. I guess it's fine, it just, it just looks weird that you need a whole separate app store and a whole separate content store just for supporting 4View. Like YouTube doesn't support 4View, for example. And as far as photos, no other phone out there can view 4View photos either, uh, but to see what other people with hydrogens are shooting, there's this app that I actually like called Holopix. It's kind of like an Instagram, but just for the 3D or 4View photos. There's a lot of cool stuff on here that people are shooting but there's basically just a couple hundred users at this point, just people with hydrogens. I have four followers on here, so uh, check me out. But as I've gone down through the list now, you've probably noticed there aren't really a whole lot of overwhelmingly positive things to say about this $1,295 phone as it exists right now. The one and only upside that I could possibly think of to save this phone, and actually what makes it so frustrating is Red. What I didn't talk about or mention even at all in this video is the pins down here at the bottom of the back of the phone. These exposed pin arrays, similar to what we've seen on like Moto phones as they've experimented with modularity, are a, a sort of an unlockable key that hasn't been turned yet. At the bottom of Red's site, they have a whole section about modules, expandable storage, camera module, and power pack modules, all coming in 2019. So you can see, you know, a power pack module for extra battery life on the already huge battery or an expandable storage module for adding even more storage, again, pretty simple, or the camera module, the cinema module, which would be adding a custom red-made sensor and an interchangeable lens mount, 
which would turn this, the, uh, that, that's what we want. That would make this the red camera in your pocket that we were originally excited about from top to bottom. Red silicon, interchangeable lens mount, smartphone form factor, that would totally level up this device. But as of right now, that's just a complete fantasy that just exists in the text on that page for now. I even asked Jim about this as well, and he just confirmed what it already says on the site, which is just 2019, sometime in 2019. I think, I think there's really basically just two ways to think about this phone, depending on how you feel about red. This phone is either an overpriced, total flop with last year's specs and some gimmicky 3D, or this is some revolutionary upcoming modular device somewhere between a smartphone and a portable cinema camera with this virtual reality mode to it all wrapped in one thing. You probably already know which side you stand on. As of right now, there's honestly no way to recommend this phone for $1,300 like, imagine this phone without red attached to it at all, without the red label or the red name on it. This is, at that point, just some hopeless, like, random Android phone, probably a $400 device, uh, with no hope of ever getting modules. But with red behind it, if you trust red, if you respect red and you think they're gonna stay behind this, then this could be a really interesting device in the next year. The only redeeming quality is the potential for future improvement if you trust red. Man, I wanted this phone to be so good, and parts of it are pretty good, but as a complete package, there's only a tiny sliver of people I could say should actually buy it as is, and even those people should probably wait and save your money. So, I'll be waiting for the modules, or hydrogen two, whichever comes first. Either way, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.